Hello, everybody. Uh, I work in Avalanche Dynamics, and um, when I say that, many people think about uh, snow avalanches, but it's also how materials get magnetized, how earthquakes occur, how uh, solar flares occur, how things break up, and along, etc. No? In uh, condensed matter, when we have interacting systems that are governed by so some kind of uh, quench or static disorder, the system tends to, uh, to evolve in a, in a in a spiky way, you know, and in sudden jumps that we call avalanches. You know, we now can compare uh, some of these phenomena. For instance, we have, we have worked with uh, these two phenomena, the failure of small materials and earthquakes, and that's why I named this talk uh, Earthquake Inside a Thumble uh, Sized Porous Glass. You know? Earthquakes are so interesting in its uh, statistical data because they are not random, uh, random events. They tend to, to focus in, in fault systems between plates that exhibit uh, multifractality. They, they are scale-free in, in, uh, in magnitude, and they have this, uh, this sequence in weight, that, uh, this aftershock sequence after a big event. For instance, this is the, the Japan big earthquake that tends to disappear over time. No? Overall, what we have is very similar to a critical system that has no characteristic uh, scale. In, in other words, we can take uh, a portion of the aircraft small enough, and uh, we will have to, we will be able to reproduce all the same statistical data. And if this is true for all scale, maybe we can go further and bring a piece small enough to make some studies inside the lab with it. No? This is a piece of bicore that we, we analyzed. And uh, our experiment and device, uh, it's uh, this one. Uh, so we hang an increasing load from our experiment and device that compresses our, our sample. And that eventually creates the initiation of, of micro cracks or, or macro cracks inside this material that emit some acoustical wave that are uh, recorded by, uh, by, uh, by this sensor. No? So we can. Reproduce again all the same um, sequence that we had with earthquakes, the same data, and we see that we also have a scale-free behavior of, of energies, and we also can, can find these uh, aftershock sequences uh, until the, the material collapses and, well, and disappears the signal. Now we can uh, study a very interesting um, uh, mag uh, uh, magnitude that is waiting times between uh, earthquakes or, or signals above a certain uh, energy threshold. And if we plot the, the distribution of these waiting times, we find uh, this interesting course. This is in a double logarithmic scale. But uh, for different uh, compressing rates, we find this uh, for movement of well, these, these curves that are very similar. But even more, if we scale it for, it for its rate, for the rate of each sequences, we get this unified scaling rule that also fulfills earthquakes. And that is also predict for an uh, epidemic type aftershock model that is a, a mean field model. It doesn't reproduce the, the microscopical uh, scale, but it's, uh, well, it's considering the existence of, of uh, aftershocks. And for this, we know that this slope up here is uh, caused by aftershocks, and the, the other one is caused by the broad distribution of, of, of the rate, of the activity rate. No? Uh, why these aftershocks uh, appear in, in, in different, uh, well, not only in, in seismological data, but also in the factors of materials? It's, it's an open question. And we, don't have, we don't have any explanation in the micro microscopical level. And this is an open topic that needs to be tackled, uh, let's see, by, well, this and if this is uh, a hidden universal class or, or anything. This is an interesting topic that must to be tackled from different uh, areas, you know, such as chemistry, geology, rheology, and all, and uh, co computational and material science, and quantum mapping, and, and it involves a lot of calculus, of course. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks to the organizer.